it just kept coming upon me to share it uh, again tonight. And uh, we don't want to keep you too long. Uh, but if you got your Bible, turn to 2 Kings chapter 1. I want to speak to you tonight about our source. Our source, where we turn to, who we look to, why we look to Him. Give you just a moment. Get 2 Kings and chapter 1. I'm thankful to God. You know, well, I won't even get into that while you're turning. Yes, I will too. Why not? Thankful to God that there's people in the land that you don't have to coax out and promise them a bunch of prizes and entertain them to get them in church. They just come out because they love God. You know, that's, that's good. Don't ever lose that. So many places, you've got to have something going. Uh, some type of entertainment or something to get folks out. You don't have that or some big something or another. And uh, I, I tell you who, who I like for us to be attracted to. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. That should be the attraction. That should be the thing that draws. That we should, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled when I see God's people fascinated by other things other than Jesus. You know, there should be a fascination. That, that, that should thrill us. And, and, and we should, you know, get to a point where, yeah, all that stuff's fine. I'm not talking necessarily about sinful things. You know, there's a lot of people that would rather do things that are not really sinful. But, and, and you know what? I've heard some people say, well, i got to have a vacation once in a while. Now, if you take a vacation, I'm not talking about people going off on vacation, but I, I know people, you know, I, I just got to take a little time off. From what? The presence of God? Vacation from what? I, I don't understand all that. Anyway, enough of that. Have you got 2 Kings? Look at chapter 1. 2 Kings. Did I say first? I meant to say second. 2 Kings chapter 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not, because there is not a god in Israel, that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron? Now, that's all I'm going to read. Folks, this is, is kind of a sad situation. Here we find a man, and, and let me say it at the onset, let me back up. If you are here tonight and you are sick, and you use medicine or you go to a doctor, I'm not down on you, I'm not against you, I'm not discouraging that. That's not the point of this message at all, okay? Just so everybody understands that. But here we find a man who has a need in his life. Forget that it's physical. He has a need. And he runs to the godless crowd, the devil's bunch, to get an answer. I could understand that. It's never right. It's never right for anybody to resort to the devil. But I could understand it if the man was born in a heathen country that had no background of God whatsoever. I could understand if he had a heritage all the way down the line, his ancestors and forefathers were, were totally void of any knowledge of God. The only thing they ever knew was pagan, heathen idol worship. I could understand him doing that. And I'm not picking on old King Ahaziah here, but what I don't understand is he was of the children of Israel who had a rich spiritual heritage. Their forefathers had witnessed the cloud 
They had witnessed the mighty hand of God deliver them from Egypt through plagues, signs, and wonders. They had witnessed the Red Sea open. They had told it generation after generation. They had been committed the oracles of God. They weren't without a Bible. They had the what's known as the Pentateuch, if I pronounce that right, the five books. They had Moses, the prophets. They had been visited by prophets on top of prophets, spokesmen. There was Elijah, which was a prophet of God, proven prophet of God, was alive there right now. It wasn't that they were totally void of any knowledge of God. They had a spiritual heritage that was rich in the things of God. They could trace their ancestry back to many godly men. I know Israel had their ups and downs, but folks, they had witnessed one demonstration after the other. They could trace their roots back to Father Abraham who had cut the covenant with God. And they were his offspring. And as as that offspring, these people had a covenant. They were in covenant relationship with God. And God had told them in coming up out of Egypt, if you'll serve me, if you'll obey my word, I'll drive out all the heat in the lands. I won't put none of the diseases upon you that the Egyptians had. But I'll be the Lord God that heals you. Healing was included in this old covenant. He said, I'll be your doctor. I'll doctor you. They had come up out of Egypt. Their clothes didn't get old. They didn't get sick. The Bible said there wasn't a feeble one among them. God's power rested upon them. God had wrought victory after victory to where there would be no mistake that God was their God and that He was among all the gods that existed in that day. He was God. Above any and all others. You know, this is the kind of background this man come from. Yet in spite of the promises, they had men who could open those old promises up and read the written, holy, precious, pure Word of God to them. The unfailing, unchanging Word of God to them. And in spite of all of that, in spite of the fact that he could turn back and see God's dealings with the nation, rescuing them in a supernatural manner, then not too long ago, he could even remember it. Ahab had just died, and he took Ahab's place, and Ahab and Jehoshaphat were in cahoots one time when God rescued them. Well, I believe that was later after that. I may be getting that wrong, but what I'm saying is, uh, you know, Elijah had been, you know, there on Mount Carmel and all of that. Uh, they, he was old enough that he could have witnessed some of these things. Yet in spite of all of this uh, background, here we find this man resorting to the devil as if God was nowhere to be found. What, what an insult to this man. And the people of God had come to Mount Sinai and God thundered there and spoke to him. And he said, if you keep all my commandments and if you do this, I'll be a God to you. And he declared certain blessings that would be upon them. And they said, all the Lord spoke and we'll do. A covenant people in relationship with God. Yet we find them in the hour of need, we find this man going elsewhere to find the answer to what it was that he needed. I'm reminded of the song that we're probably all familiar with. What a friend we have in Jesus. There's one line in that song that says, Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Now, we think this is a shame. Now, I'm not here to scold nobody. I don't know anybody in here tonight what you're doing or anything. This is a message God laid on my heart. We say, boy, that's terrible. I mean, this is, you know, when you begin to realize all this stuff that I mentioned, rich in spiritual heritage, had the Word of God, had the promises of God they could have, had prophets they could have went to, and still going to the devil? Folks, that don't make sense. You say, yes, that's bad. Now let's bring it down to our day. We too are a people of God, redeemed, I might add. We have come out of Egypt, which is Egypt is a type of bondage. If you've answered the call to the gospel and responded and said, Yes, Lord, you have been delivered with a great high hand, with a great prophet, the Lord Jesus Christ. You are also in covenant with God through Jesus Christ. It's been sealed with the blood of the Son of God. 
The Bible referred to us, I believe it's in First or Second Peter chapter 1, it says that we have exceeding great and precious promises. Unfailing promises. These are words, folks, that were addressed to you and I. They pertain to you and I, the New Testament believer. We've got tremendous promises. Uh, nobody, I've said this before, but if God opened the seal and come down here visible and spoke all of it, who would have trouble believing that? None of us would, would we? This Bible is God speaking and you can take Him at His word. We've got all these promises available to us. We've got all the blessings. We've been seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We've been delivered from every power of darkness that there ever was. Then how dare us, how dare us in our hour of need treat God as if He's weak, as if He's no longer in the business to help, as if He can just do certain things, but, you know, some things He just won't do. How dare us resort to other things? Now, let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm not accusing nobody here of this. But I talked to a Christian not long ago. A Christian. A Christian. And folks, I don't understand this. The man said, I needed some direction in my life. You know, there's no problem. Everybody here, if you haven't, at one time or another, you'll come to a place where you find yourself wondering, which way do I go? I need some direction. I need some wisdom. And I don't want to do this because it might be wrong. And I don't want to do that. And God don't fall out with you over that. But this man, this man, and I'm not down on him. Love him. Pray for him. But this man told me, he said, I had to have some answers. So he said, I went down to a palm reader. And, you know, with some text. Folks, there are Christians. It's a sad shame that call these 900 numbers on television to get a psychic to tell them what to do as if there's not a God among the saints in the church of the living God to help us. I know of children of God that can't get an answer. And you know, sometimes it's not their fault. They go to a church that's out of touch with God, that's walking in disobedience. They've got a pastor ain't prayed in a hundred years. And they go to get counseling. He gives them some dead words. And because they can find no help, and that is a serious indictment against the church when people come to us and can't find help. Let me tell you something. The Bible says he has set first the apostles and then prophets, then gifts of healing, and then governments and helps and, and gifts of this and gifts of that. There is everything and under the sun poured out in the body of Christ. There's no reason why someone should have to resort to the devil. And these folks come, and the preacher, well, I don't know why he's not in touch with God. Now, I'm not saying, but I, I'll say this, I believe you got a good pastor. I ain't saying that, but I believe Brother, Brother Adams is, is in touch with the Lord. He loves the Lord. He's got a heart for God. He's got a heart for the sheep of God. He'll tell you the truth. So I'm not throwing that, but I'm just saying there's places people have resorted to other stuff because there was nothing at the church. And it must grieve the very heart of our Father. It must grieve Him. When we treat him as if he's packed up his bag and gone on vacation. As if he's no longer in the business. As if we can't come to him and expect him to... Oh, we come to him, but, you know, we don't really expect him to do anything. Friends, let me tell you something. There are prophets in the church of the living God today. Don't go to some psychic on television when you need a word from the Lord. I don't see nothing wrong... Now, there's folks who criticize me for that. Brother Bruce, uh, I just don't believe that God's people ought to be running around getting a word for the Lord. Well, I believe you should seek God for yourself. You have an obligation for it. He don't want nothing else, not even prophets between you and Him. He's a jealous God. But folks, there's nothing wrong. Uh, you know, people say, well, where's your scripture for that? Well, let me ask you this. Where's your scripture to go to the pastor and get counseling? You know... But it's good. It's good to go because God will counsel you through the wisdom of that pastor, that shepherd that He sent over you. 
He'll also give a prophet a word for you. There are prophets in the church. There are pastors that God has bestowed divine enablements upon. And there's no reason for you to go anywhere outside the church looking for the answer. I, I got to tell you this. And I'm not at all proud of it. I'm not at all proud of it. But back, some years back, about ten years ago in fact, and I don't mean to justify my wrongdoing. There's never no excuse for failing God. But there are reasons. Did you catch that? There's no excuse, but there are reasons. And I did not know back then what I know now. And there's some things happened in my life. And I found myself totally confused. Mad at God. I was mad at God. I felt like He had let me down. I'd served Him. I'd done my best and was tangled up in some church that was a complete mess. Offered no comfort. I'm not down. God knows I had... God on my... Before God, I stand here and I let Him bear me record. I have no animosity in my heart toward them people at all. None. None. But they didn't care. And you couldn't get help. They weren't in touch with God themselves. And I wound up without nothing. Nobody. Nothing. Down on my luck. Found, I remember one of the night, I remember I looked and found some long John Silvers in the garbage can. Lost my family. Every, lost everything. And I sat down there and there I had myself a pity party. Devil will have a pity party with you. Poor thing. You poor fella. If anybody's got a right to quit on God, you do. You are just backslide, you know it. I mean, after all, ain't too many of them other people up in the church going through what you're going through. You have every right in the world. Listen, folks. God's faithful. And I don't care if you find yourself out sleeping in a side ditch somewhere. You stay with Him because He'll take whatever bad happens in your life and work it around for your good. I've shared this thought with her. Does not the men and wife was talking about today, even a matter of fact, we was going down the road and I was telling her, does not the Bible say all things work together for good? All things. Does that mean all? Everything, even the bad. You mean you go home tonight and your house burnt down and God's going to work it for your good? Even the bad things? All right, then listen here. Does God give good blessings? Of course He does. Okay, God gives good blessings and He takes the bad things that happen and works good out of that. There can't nothing but good happen to you. You know. Now, but I got down. Now, I, I, I want you to think, this, this is something. So, I decide to go to a counseling center, get some counseling, because my nerve was shot. I was sick. I had thrown my Bible and lived in a little hut by myself. Went to going out in the world doing stuff and just got all tore up. And I said, I've got to have some help. So I go to the counseling place. Now, folks, God's holy word is not welcome in there. And I'm going to tell you this up front. I don't care how licensed they are, how professional they may be, if they will not resort to God's word and, and treat it as an antique, outdated book that's useless, you will not be able to get counseling worth 15 cents in a place like that. And I went down there and I said, I've got to have some count in my life. And they said, well, uh, do you want uh, to do this? Uh, do, do you want a drink? I said, well, yeah. Well, then, you know, there's no wrong or right. You know, if you want to do it. That's why if you want to get abortion, just get one. If you want to get a divorce and bust your up, just, just go do You know, that's the kind of counseling you get in a place like that. And, but, you know, outside of that, do you know they really helped me? Now, I, I want you, I mean, this, this is brilliant. This, this is real. This is it's something else. Do you know what they told me to do to help me in my time of crisis? They told me and showed me how to do some deep breathing exercises. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that something? I won't go to God, but I'll go down here to a bunch of old devils, absolute devils, and pay good money to them for them to tell me how to breathe. 
I don't understand God's people that will resort to... I, and I went in, Folks, I know Christians and I'm not down on them. I'm not belittling them. I'm just trying to tell them, hey, there's a better way. There are some people upon the face of planet Earth that are in touch with God Almighty. You don't have to go down and pay some money out for some devil to tell you the best thing you need to start doing is smoke a, a cigarette that's a little longer and drink five cups of coffee instead of one. That'll help you out a lot. That's what I told him. He said, drink some coffee and smoke some cigarettes. Do you smoke? Oh, you might have started. Helps your nerves a lot. Helps me out. As a matter of fact, I'm dying for one now. Puff, puff, puff. And here's how you do it. You breathe it. Kind of hold it a little and uh, like that. Don't you feel better? I said, gee, that, everything's all together different now. Now, I know we find that just a little bit comical. But folks, it breaks my heart when I see people hurting. And, and listen, I'm not down on them. I know there's people who goes through some hard things. But when I see them going to a place like that, I know they're not going to get the kind of help they need. I know they're not going to get any lasting help. I know that I've got what they need. I know that if you'll say, listen. Now, folks, this is where the church is going to have to come off it and get down and listen a minute. We think that, that we are not doing it. Listen, tell somebody. Say, listen, you've been going down there for how long? And paying out 100, 150 bucks at a clip to have them tell you to breathe right or to try drinking an extra cup of coffee or go for a walk in the morning or buy yourself a dog or some nonsense like that. Why don't you come down? We've got some people that's filled with the Holy Ghost that can lay their hands on you and run that devil away from you. We got some people that can take authority over that demon that's tormenting you and rebuke it and your nerves will get calm. And it don't cost you nothing. Is it not because there's a God among us that we got to go to devils and resort to people that, that don't even believe in God, that believes that we're all we're grasshoppers one time and now we're in this life and, and, you know, and tell you to meditate and get in touch with your innermost self and all that nonsense? That has its origination in hell. It originates with the devil. It must grieve God. I can understand sinner people doing that. But I don't understand a people that's got a covenant with a God. That's got everything. You say, well, I don't know where there's any people that's got enough power about them. They're round. They're round. Hunt them out. Well, I don't know. If you want deliverance bad enough, go hunt for them. It's not too much to drive two or three hundred miles. We'd drive five hundred miles to do something to send our soul to hell. Back when we was living for the devil. We used to do stuff. Spend money. Good money. Sweated for it. And didn't mind driving a thousand miles. Spend out hard-earned money. And I don't understand Christians. And I don't know any of you. What I don't know. I don't know. But listen. If you're driving a blue million miles and spending out good money because your nerves need a little rest, you don't need to, you need to get in the presence of God because there's rest for the weary. There's rest. I don't need to go to the Four Seasons Lodge. Brother Bruce, don't you think you need to get off for no? I can have a good vacation basking in the presence of the blessed Holy Ghost. Tell him. Say, I'm confused. I'm confused. I don't know which way to go. Well, listen, you come down to church. We'll pray. We got people with prophetic anointing upon them. And we'll pray and we'll just kind of wait a minute and wait before the Lord and sit and let Him guide and direct. And God will give you a word. He'll tell you. He'll give you some wisdom. He'll tell you. He'll talk to you. You don't have to back up and say, well, I'm afraid of telling them that because I'm afraid I'll get down there and nothing will happen. You don't have to back up in doubt and unbelief like that. You can tell them, you come down, our people are praying, you've got to move. You don't have, folks, we're 
not we're not serving a God that's uh, you know that and you listen to me. Stuck my hand in something there. That's sticky. You don't have to say, well, I'm going to take them down here and pray. I, I sure do hope that the Lord... You hope. Why don't you just insult Him? Let me ask you something. If Jesus were standing here in bodily form, do you think He'd turn a one away? you think He'd turn one? You could go get the rankest. You could go get the one that didn't deserve it. And let me tell you, for deserving, don't a one of us deserve His mercy. Not a one. You're looking at the biggest failure. People said, uh, well, you know, in talking to people about churches, I've had some of you talk to me, this, said, uh, let me ask you something. Said, uh, do you, how many degrees, do you have degrees? And, you know, and, and they begin asking you all these questions. And all of this and all of that. I don't know how I got off on that. We need to, to get back. Folks, listen. Be concerned about one thing. Is the touch of God upon you or not? Who can, you can tell these people. You, you know, it must grieve the heart of our Father to death. I'm not against education. Get all of it you can. If you're called into ministry, get some education. Get it so God will have something to annoy. I'm not against that. But folks, I'm going to tell you, you can get a head full of theology and that won't cast no devils out. That won't, you can't give a person a word of encouragement through a head full of theology. A head full of theology is not what the world's hurting for. They need a real, a real, a real touch of the living God. Not just something we talk about, but experience it. We've still got what the world needs. And if you're a child of God, you're not exempt from trouble. You're going to need some direction sometime. And you're going to find yourself up against some pretty unsurmountable odds from time to time. But you know something? You're still on the winning side. And he's still got some people. And, and listen, Saint, that's why, do you know what? We need to live ready. We need to live ready. Everlasting. We've got the idea that the pastor is supposed to be the only spiritual one amongst us. You know what God wants? He wants a body of people that reflects the whole life of Jesus Christ and the whole entire ministry. Not just through some superstar minister, but through a church, a local assembly. You know what? To where people can say, you're go excuse me, you're going where? Down to see the psychiatrist for him to sit there and go, mm-hmm, yes, yes, I understand. Yes. Have you tried breathing lately? It's, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. That, they do, folks. I've been to them. They sit there, mm-hmm, yes, I understand. Go on. They scribble on a little pad. Yes. Go ahead. Tell me a little more about that. You know, that's all it takes. I, I can get rich. I can do that. It don't take a brainiac to do stuff like that. But you can tell them people, hey, there's a church here in town that if you go down there, I've seen people go down there that were suicidal, that left happy and free and rejoicing, and they're not suicidal no more, and they're different. There's something going on down there. You can go down, And you know something? They don't hit you up for a hundred and a half. I mean, I know so-and-so that was ready for the Looney Tune. Went down there and come back and they're not even the same person. It's His presence that will make all the difference. All the difference in the world. All the difference. Won't you stand with me tonight? If you're here tonight, I would encourage you. Calvary is still a good place to go. There are teachers, there are prophets, there are pastors with the wisdom of God upon them that can help you. There are people that can lay their hands upon you and pray that that devil will leave you to where you could lay down and sleep tonight. Get a good night's rest. But please, whatever you do, and I don't speak this to your shame, 
Please, whatever you do, don't resort to 900 numbers and psychics and all that junk. I could see it if God wasn't nowhere on the planet, but folks, He's alive and He's in His people and He's in His church tonight. You don't have to. You don't have to accept no, and you don't have to accept defeat, and you don't have to resign yourself and resolve yourself to live in a state of constant confusion and defeat. You don't have to accept that. You can come to Him and say, Lord, I need something. If there's no one with giftings or anointing, God will raise somebody up out of the gravel pit out here somewhere. And they can come and lay their hands on you and they can speak words to you and they can say things and the anointing of God will come on you. Glory to God. If you're struggling tonight, there's a blessed old story about a man that hung on Calvary and shed blood. Folks, that's been years and years ago. But that blood... That blood is still just as powerful tonight as it was one second after it was shed. That blood can still take the vilest heart and set that vile sinner free. That blood can still take a prostitute and make a pure woman out of her. That blood can take a dope addict and a drunkard and make a sane, sound person out of him. Stand to heaven and hear from God. Give me a G or hit an F. Hit F, Lord.